Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Daily Critique. This is the second part of a two-part Daily Critique video. To get the most out of this video, you're definitely going to want to go back and watch part one uh, because I'm not going to do a recap here. I'm just going to say that this beautiful portrait was submitted by Flows, an intermediate photographer from New Jersey, and we're going to get right into the second part of the video today. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was the idea of perspective relative to lens choice and how close you are to your main subject or portrait subject. When we're looking at things in reality, it's just such a different scenario in terms of our perception of what's going on versus looking at a photograph of the same reality. Um, when we're looking at a scene, we know that between looking and brain function, conscious and subconscious, we scan the scene about 40 or 50 times a second and we build a mental image of the scene that talks to us about the relationship between all the things that we're seeing very different than a photograph. In a picture when it comes to perspective, in this shot flows using an effective focal length of 40 millimeters. She's very close to her grandson Connor. His head appears very big in this portrait, but his hand, which is not much further away, is starting to, relative to the size of his face, appear to recede or get very small very fast. When you combine that perspective distortion with the fact that we don't see the far shoulder, as interesting as the quality of line here is in the hand, and as interesting as this, which is part of the roll-up from the silverware, as interesting as that subject is, and as unified as those shapes are, with the real strong feeling of the design of the circle in so many different ways in this photograph, as interesting as those things are, for some viewers, the perspective distortion of the hand becoming very small and seemingly being cut off from uh, Connor's body, this could start to become a distraction once you start to have that feeling of where is the hand coming from. And so there are just two basic points that I want to make here, just constantly reminding ourselves of this perspective distortion that the lens is always creating. You know, it can work in our favor in landscape photography and uh, sort of the David Muchian sort of big uh, foreground, this perspective distorted that sweeps out to the middle ground and the far background. Uh, where we're taking advantage of getting very, very close to things with a wide-angle lens and making them appear much bigger than things that are maybe four or five or six or ten feet away. Um, that's an example of sort of taking advantage of pers perspective distortion, but in portraiture, where the relative size of different parts of a person's face or the relative size of different parts of a person's body, these kind of perspective distortions can become potential distractions. They're sort of very important things to think about and remember. And the idea of shoulders is something that I'm constantly thinking about. Even in a shot where we don't show any uh, hands or much arm, if we show one shoulder and don't show the other, because of an angle, it can start to look very, very odd, like we're looking at just part of a person, and then this concept of hands and arms that come back in, where we don't get enough of a suggestion of a shoulder that they're connected to. Just sort of two things to think about. Another thing that Flo expressed concern about was sort of the color cast. Um, and, and overall in the image and also on Connor's face. And so I wanted to talk about that in, in today's video a little bit. One of the things that I'll try to do when I have a color cast in images is see if I can get rid of some color overall. And I feel like there's a pretty strong sense of red overall here, particularly in the face. So one of the first things that I did was an adjustment layer to get rid of red. And there's the work. And I applied that in a local way. When you look at the mask, you can see wherever here that there's uh, white or near white is where I've used most of the adjustment. So you can see that I've gotten rid of quite a bit of red if we go back and see where that white is um, on Connor's face and also in some areas in the background, the hand. So I'm trying to get rid of that red in areas where there's skin tones. That was the first thing that I did. And so much of the time, in scenes where I have color cast on skin, and if I'm trying to deal with it in a basic way, I'll use hue saturation and desaturate. I could start to get more complicated as a retoucher, and I could come in and start to try and use uh, a, a, a function of Photoshop that we talked about the other day, Cooler, which is a color wheel where we can bring in and select color opposites and paint away a color cast by painting its complement at a very low opacity. You might want to go back and watch our Cooler video. Um, but so much of the time, they're color cast and they're changing. So you can see here there's a lot of orange, then it starts to move more towards yellow, then magenta. 
and so uh, a lot of times if I'm going to come in in a specific way get rid of the color cast is when it's just a little bit of a problem and it's localized. Here I've got a lot of different color casts so what I'm going to do is desaturate and then apply that locally and I've done that twice on these two layers. You can see that I'm starting to sort of attack the issue of maybe too much orange and too much red. Obviously all this is subjective but in my mind I'm trying to move the skin tone on Connor's face back towards something that's a little bit more of a natural skin to tone and a neutral and I came in on another layer up here and got rid of some yellow. That also has an effect on value because yellow has a big effect on sort of luminosity. Um, I want to show you the mask again and just keep driving the point home of when I want to make a smaller adjustment on a mask, I pick a smaller brush so I stay at zero hardness on the edge of my brush at all times when I'm adjusting a mask. If I want to make more of a fine adjustment, I'll pick a smaller brush and that way uh, I stay away from or try to avoid the idea of getting unnatural halos or edges around areas where I've made a correction. I did a little curves adjustment there to brighten up Connor's eyes a little bit more there's that color balance that we talked about before and a lot of the times when I have color issues I look in black and white. There's just a basic black and white adjustment layer and a variation of the image in monochrome and I actually like this quite a bit. Um, to me the background gets a lot simpler. The idea of white being so visually heavy and drawing my mind's eye past Connor's face isn't nearly of an issue because white doesn't have nearly the, the, uh, the visual weight and a black and white file and color file is the absence of color and it's just so visually heavy and this is one where I would really seriously consider converting this to a black and white portrait. Last thing that I wanted to talk about is layers of story. What do I mean by that in a portrait trying to uh, a lot of times take the cinematic approach where I at the least do what Flo has done here very beautifully. Include a little bit of environment and use flow of focus to weight the portrait subject as the heaviest part. Great job here of getting sharpness in the eyes and sharpness in the face, shooting at f2.8 and then the focus falls off to suggest this background and it also uh, says more about Connor and it starts to suggest a story that could really help to leave the viewer in the frame a lot longer maybe even more powerful is to shoot through something. Maybe you have the other hand out in front and you start with a foreground that's out of focus that's out here then you get to the sharpness in Connor's face and then you have information in the background that's out of focus and that's a very powerful cinematic effect. You'll see those kinds of shots even in extreme close-ups a lot of times you'll see that kind of flow of story near middle ground with the portrait subject and then far with the focus on the portrait subject you'll see that quite a bit and it's something that I think about. You know, just showing somebody's face can work, but a lot of times getting the hands in. It's neat to see one hand here. And then other uh, layers of story will help to move the viewer into the image, both visually and psychologically, and they'll stay with it a lot longer. And they'll start to, as they get more information, make up their own story about what's going on. Really love this portrait from Flo. And, you know, the, the main things that I like about this have to do with the quality of light here. Um, the, the beautiful dimensional lighting and also the fact the light's coming up a little bit that starts to create an edginess or an uneasiness that we talked about yesterday and then uh, this looking right at the viewer very very powerful potentially confrontational in the head straight up and down and the closeness of the camera here really powerful portrait from Flo I want to say a big thank you to her for sharing it with us and we hope to see you again real soon on the Mindful Eyes Daily Critique